Omakyam, on Gavol praise, on Guru to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. Double to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, who teach you well, and Shalom to the sincere Akim, furnish truth and sincerity. Shalom. In this, uh, this video, I want to speak on Amalek, you know, who they are in this day and age, and uh, you know, a couple of things concerning the history contained in the scriptures. You know what, and, and, and eventually, what is going to be the latter end? You know, as we're moving, you know, towards, uh, you know, the end of this current world. You know, which it basically goes into in, uh, into the end of this current age of rulership. You see, because you know, we see prophecies unfolding upon the earth, and we see that you know this society is crumbling down in order for another other society or kingdom to rise above, which is going to be the nation of Israel, you know, Yasha Allah, you know, the prince of the power, you know, the chosen people of Yahweh and Yasha, who are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but also those who are scattered among the heathen nations, that might look like the heathen nations, but it lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to their father's seed line. You see, so what I want to do is I want to start off in Numbers chapter 24, in verse 20, where it reads, And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. And what I want to do is I want to break down, you know, this, uh, this scripture, you know, and... Uh, basically go into uh, why Amalek was the first of the nations, you know, and, uh, you know how it's going to be that his latter end should be that he perish forever. You see, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to, uh, um, you know, speak on why Amalek was the first of the nations and what it actually means, you know, because when we go back in history, you know, we go back to the book of Exodus, you know, we come to find out in Exodus chapter 17 when we were in the wilderness, you know, led by Moses, you know, through the spirit of the Abash Shai, you know, that Amalek it was the first nation that came up against us, you know, when we came up out of Egypt. You see, so this is uh, Exodus chapter 17 and uh, verse, verse 8, where it says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men, and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of the Most High in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they, took a, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he said to run. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You see, so when, uh, you know, when our nation fought against Amalek, you know, with, uh, you know, with Joshua, you know, as our, uh, as our captain, you know, and Moses being... Uh, you know, being our uh, being our uh, prime leader, you know, they uh, they were fighting, you know, and as long as as Moses held up his hands in the air, you know, we, we we would prevail. We 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 would be on the winning side. But as as soon as he would you know lower his hands, you know, Amalek would be the ones you know, that would start to prevail and, and basically win the fight. You know, but it also says that you know the hands of Moses were held up high. You see. So this is verse 13. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar, altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord Yahweh had sworn that the Lord Jehovah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You see, so you know, we, Amalek was the first nation to come up against us, you know, to battle. 
from all the other nations that came that, that basically were upon the earth you know during that time they were the first one you see and the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, break down you know who, who Amalek you know is in this day and age you see in order to do that we need to go to Genesis chapter 36 you see and we come to find out that they are you know the descendants of Esau Edom the so-called white men upon the earth and what else I'm gonna do I'm gonna read a couple of things on the Wikipedia concerning Amalek you know to, uh, to give a better picture and a clear clear image you know what's going on who they are you know so this is uh, Genesis chapter 36 verse 9 and these are the generations of Esau the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir and we know that Esau Edom, Edom is the so-called white man upon the earth you know I broke it down multiple times in, in previous videos you know might have been that you know um, it's not on this, this 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 channel because my channel got recently taken down you know but you know, in the future, you know, Lord willing, I might do a, a new breakdown on who Esau, Edom, the so-called Bible upon the earth, you know, basically is, you know, because I already, I, I already spilled the beans, man, but, you know, I'm going to break down that Esau, Edom is the so-called Bible upon the earth, you know, Lord willing, you know, but reading on, verse 10, these are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Hadar, the wife of Esau, uh, Ravel, the son of uh, Bashemat, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliphaz were Timon, Omar, Zepho, and Ketam, and Kinas. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So we come to find out that Amalek is a descendant of, of, of Esau Edom. Which we know that Esau Edom is a so called white man upon the earth. But who are these Edomites in actuality in this day and age? You know, because you know, you might look upon the earth and you see all these these you know different people that look like so called white people. You know, but you know, there there is a, a small difference, you know, when, when when speaking concerning Amalek. You know, because these Amalekites are actually the people that claim themselves to be the people of the scriptures, they claim themselves to be the people of the Bible. You know, those are the, those are the people that are in Israel in this day and age, but those are also the people that are in in, in modern day Turkey. You know, those are Amalekites as well. You see, so um, to make my point concerning that they claim to be the people of the scriptures, I want to go to Revelations, Revelation chapter three. Revelations chapter 3 verse 9 behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee you see so they claim they claim to be the people of the scriptures but actually they are they're basically the synagogue of Satan and they worship Satan they 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 do the will of Satan, you know, on the left hand side, you see. And it also says, I will make them to come and worship before that feet and to know that I have loved thee. You know, because you know, once Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, all these other nations you know, before, you know, the thousand year period, you know, which, which is going to be, uh, as it says in Revelation 20, you know, before that, that's all going to take place, you know, there will be a period of a thousand years of hardcore slavery, which these uh, Edomites, which also includes these Amalekites, because they are descendants of Esau, you know, which they will be, be servant and subject unto us, the Israelites, you see. But after a thousand years, as it also says in Exodus chapter 17 and Numbers chapter 24 verse 20, that they're gonna basically gonna be extinguished. They're gonna perish forever. You see, because they're gonna receive the same. Uh, they, they might be called the Edomite, uh, so like the Amalekites, but their lineage does go back to Esau. You see, so they're gonna receive those punishments that are punishments that are written in the scriptures concer concerning Esau. You see, so all these people that are that are being called by different names, for instance, the Timonites, you know, which are these these Germans, you know, the wisest of them all. 
of these Edomites. They might be called Temanites, but the lineage goes back to Esau, which makes them Edomites, which means they're going to receive the same punishment you know, concerning Esau Edom. But I digress a little bit. This is Revelation um, chapter 20, verse 5, where it says, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So first these nations that will be put into, into a thousand years of hardcore slavery to build up the kingdom again. You see, but after those thousand years, all these nations will go back to their own country. But the Edomites, you know, they're going to be extinguished. They're going to perish. You know? They're going to be utterly destroyed. So uh, I said I'm going to read a couple of things on, on the Wikipedia. Concerning Amalek. So it says, Amalek, in Hebrew, uh, Aymalak, is a nation described in the Hebrew Bible as an enemy of the Israelites. The name Amalek can refer to the nation's founder, a grandson of Esau. See, his descendants, the Amalekites, or the territories of Amalek which they inhabited. You see, so here we can read again that, you know, Amalek. The Amalekites are descendants of Esau Edom, which is the soap of white men upon the earth. But this is a couple of things concerning uh, um, where it says the Amalekites in the Hebrew Bible. It says, according to the Bible, Amalek was the son of Eliphaz, himself the son of Esau, ancestor of the Edomites. It's going to be it's mentioned again. And Eliphaz, Eliphaz's concubine, Timnah, Timnah was a... <coughs> Because Timna was a Horite uh, ancestor of Lotan, Amalek is described as a chief of Amalek among the chiefs of the sons of Esau, from which it is surmised that he ruled a clan or territory named after him. So this is something that uh, they um, surmised, which, let me look up the word. Which is something that they suspect. You know, so it's not a, a how do you say it? It's not sure. You know? But uh, you know, it also says in the same paragraph it says chiefs of the sons of Esau. This means he's the chief among the uh, the Edomites. You know, basically means if you look upon the earth right now, we can see that these, you know, the, these these Amalekites they own everything. You know, they own everything, man. They 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 own the corporations. You know, they they own. Uh, um, the media uh, companies, um, you know, a lot of celebrities go back to them. You see, so they they are they are the ones that are on top of all these all they are on top of all the nations. You see, so there is a, uh, a distinct difference between being an Edomite and being an Amalekite. You see, so these Amalekites they are the chiefest rulers upon the earth. You see, so under that you have these 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 other other uh, um, descendants of Esau. The Temanites are, are one of the smartest, you know, among the Edomites, you know, and so on and so on. But the Amalekites, you know, is the chiefest. It's basically the, the the ruling the ruling house in this day and age. So you can look all these things up for yourself. Or let me grab a picture. Uh, So here it says, this is a, uh, um, this is a small picture, and uh, let me see if I can show it on the screen. And it says, you know, I'm not going to quote what it says, but it says the, uh, the Amalekites con um, control the media, the bureaucracy and finance institutions, you know, stop lying to us. To us, stop using our money to protect their wickedness. See, so these people, these these Amalekites, are the ones that are are basically in control. You know, 
laid the chief house of Esau. This is a small picture, and uh, it says, uh, "Who really? What? Who was really behind World War II? Who controls international finances? Who control? Who controlled and still controls most of the world's media? The fight against Germany has been carried out for months by every Amalekite conference, trade organization, by every Amalekite in the world. We shall let loose a spiritual and material war of the whole world against Germany." You know, there's something that had been said in 1934. You know, so these people, they uh, they are in power basically since uh, um, the Renaissance. You know, that's that's basically when they came back into power. You see, and that also being said in um, in Revelation chapter 20. You see, because you know during the uh, the Byzantine Empire, which is the Dark Ages. You know, Jake, the, the, the Israelites, they were in rulership, you know, uh, so-called Negroes, they ruled in Europe during that time. You see what happened, you know, uh, with those, those so-called white people, those, those Edomites, they were pushed into the mountains. But it also says in scripture, after a thousand years, they will be let loose out of their prison you know, to deceive the world. You see, so this is Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And a sound angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And that angel refers to uh, uh, Septimius Severus, you know, which was the one to basically uh, um, um, to put an end to the rulership of these these uh, Edomites during the Roman Empire. You see, which after that became the Holy Roman Empire. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And they refers to these so-called white people upon the earth. They, they are the, 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 the old serpent, the devil and Satan that the Bible is talking about. And I can prove it as well with a quick, quick scripture. And they were being pushed into, uh, into Europe, in the mountains of Europe. This is... Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter uh, chapter two verse um, starting at verse eight and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord Jehovah shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, so then shall the wicked be revealed. We know that the wicked refers to Esau, Edom. You know, according to the scriptures, Malachi chapter one and four. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all, with all powers and signs and lying wonders. So, Revelation chapter 20, verse 2 refers to these, these the, to the wicked, which is Esau, Eden, the so-called white men upon the earth, which also refers to the Amalekites. Verse 3, and cast, uh, yeah, Revelation chapter 20, verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. So the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he should be loosed a little season. So they were being shut up into the uh, into the in, into the Caucasus mountains of Europe, you know, for a thousand years. But it says, and after that he must be loosed a little season, and that little season took place, you know, during the uh, during the Renaissance up to now. Jumping down to verse seven, and when the thousand years are expired. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Yeah, these, these so-called white people will come back in rulership. You know, which we know that um, Constantine the 11th, if I'm correct. You know, let me look it up. Constantine the 11th. It says... Um, The last monarch was Constantine the Eleventh, uh, Palai Logos, and it says 
Constantine XI, Dragasus uh, Palaiologos, Palaiologos, or I'm not going not to pronounce that, but it says, uh, was the last Byzantine em emperor reigning from uh, 1449 until his death in battle at the fall of Constantinople in uh, 1453. Constantine's death marked the end of the Byzantine Empire, which traces origin to Constantine's the great foundation of Constantinople as the Rome Empire's new capital in uh, 330. You know, we know that you know, um, the Byzantine Empire was defeated by the Ottomans, and the Ottomans were the Ottoman Turks, which the Turks, you know, are the... Uh, <laughs> Are the, are the same people that are in modern day Turkey right now. You see, so these people are Amalekites as well, and they came back into rulership, you know, um, when the uh, when the Byzantine Tina Empire fell. You see, for uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 8, and should go out to deceive the nations beyond the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather to them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And one of these uh, deceive this, the deceivery tricks that they pulled, you know, is claiming that they're the people of the scriptures, you know, putting all the, the lies and, 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 and um, things upon the earth, you know, that uh, we at Great Millstone, you know, trying to, uh, uh, to break down, you know, we're trying to break down these strongholds by using the scriptures, you know, but also going into the history and showing you what the actual history is, because they say history is written by the victor, you know, so all the, the, the remnants and fragments that were left, from those that were defeated, you know, basically, you know, for the majority are done away with, and which also happened with uh, uh, when they took down the, uh, the altars, the paintings, you know, iconoclasm, when they performed iconoclasm, you know, they destroyed the fact, you know, that on certain uh, images, you know, Jake was being seen ruling during the Byzantine Empire, you know, but you know, going back to, uh, to Exodus chapter 17, you know, I want to go back to verse 14, where it says, And the Lord Jehovah said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. I will utterly put out remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You know, so, knowing now that Amalek, was the first of the nations to come up against us in battle, you know. They're also going to be utterly destroyed, and the remembrance is going to be put, be, uh, be, be put out from under heaven. You see, knowing that they go back to Esau Edom, which is the so called man upon the earth, we know that they're going to receive the same punishment. So, what I want to do is, I want to go to uh, the book of Job. And start off at uh, verse, uh, well, chapter uh, 18. Mm, start off at verse 16. This is concerning uh, concerning Esau Edom, which is the wicked. It says, His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. You see, and, and we know that, you know, uh, um, Know, people are also being referred to as trees you know so if you're not going to have you know your roots in the ground you're going to basically be be uh, uh, you're going to be cut off so your roots are going to be gone you're not going to get the nutrients you're not being able to reproduce you know we're not going to get the the, the the I say the nourishment that a tree needs to flourish your branches are going to be cut off you know you're not going to have no uh, not the possibility to uh, uh, to grow any further. You know, verse 17, his remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He, 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 they're going to be gone. They're going to be like that, that, that vague that vague dream. You know, Sometimes you have a dream and then you just don't remember it no more. You know? Even though you were there at, this, at the moment when you had the dream, but then you remember the dream no more. Verse 19, he shall neither have son or nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. 
And see, so when uh, if you don't have any son or nephew among your people, you don't have the possibility to to reproduce, man. Because we know that according to Numbers chapter one, you know, your 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 family line, your lineage is determined by the father. You see. This is Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. So they declared their pedigrees, their family tree, they declared their family tree after their fathers. You see? So what is important is, is what does your father's lineage go back to? Because the man gets the seed, the woman receives the seed, you see. Because if you have a Dutch Dutch apple tree, you take that seed, you bring it over to, to Japan or China, you plant it in the, in the soil, you know, what, what's it going to be? Is it going to be a Chinese or Japanese uh, apple tree? No, it's still going to remain a Dutch apple tree, but it grew up in China. It's the same with the womb of a woman or a female. She, she just carries the seed and just makes it grow for about 10 months in the womb. But it remains what the father is. So if, if these people, if they don't have you know, son or nephew among their people, or any remaining in their dwellings, it means that they're going to be, be done away with. You see, that, that's going to be their, their reward, their judgment for everything they've done. Because they were the first one, Amalek was the first one to, to come up against us, you see. But they also did all these other atrocities, man. They were the first, they were the ones that supplied the, sh the, the, the slave ships. You know, they, 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 in this day and age, they have to control upon the earth. What did they do with it? They poisoned everything upon the earth. They tried to kill us. They tried to do away with us as a nation. And for all their atrocities, for all the, the, the hurt that they did, Against the children of Israel, the Most High is gonna gonna completely destroy and kill them. You know, which also includes all these other uh, so-called white people as well. You know, if their if their lineage goes back to Esau, Eden, the so-called white men upon the earth, because people might look at me and be like, "Hey, but you look like a so-called white person as well." Yeah, but through the Spirit, I understand these scriptures, man. I understand the scriptures. You know, I understand the breakdowns. You know. So I understand that my lineage does not go back to Esau, Edom, but goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which makes me an Israelite. Um, back in Job, chapter uh, chapter eighteen, verse twenty, they that come after him shall be astonished at his day, his day that went the four were Friday. Yeah, man, because hey, these people they 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 put a lot of fear. You know, upon upon other people, man. They'd be given the blessing of the sword. You see? And they're gonna be like amazed, like, whoa. They're gonna say, like, hey, was this the man that made all these nations to tremble? You know? Verse 21. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked. And this is the place of him that knoweth not the most high. You see, so they're gonna be taken out from the earth. You see? going to be done away with after a thousand years of hardcore slavery when Yahweh Shai comes back. You see? So, uh, I had... Another scripture. Let's see... Uh... Obadiah, this is Obadiah chapter 1, verse, uh, starting of the verse 10, and it says, For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You know, I spoke about how they, they, they do all these atrocities, man. You know, they, they, like I said, they provided the, 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 the first slave ships. You know, they're, they're trying to kill us in this day and age. You know, what did these other so-called white people do? You know, during slavery, you know, a lot of them were, were, you know, hey, a lot of them were these Amalekites as well, you know, who had us in the slavery, man, and did all these atrocities against us, man. They fed our children to the alligators, cut open, cut open the womb, 
you know, over over females, you know, and and, and basically put bets upon whether it's going to be a be a man child or whether it's going to be, whether it's going to be a be a girl, you know, just for sports and fun. You know, they play pick a nigger on Sundays at the church. You see, which that that's where the word picnic comes from. You see, so for all these things that they be that they they be doing and have have been doing upon the earth, a the shame, shame shall cover them and they're going to be cut off forever, like I already mentioned in Job chapter 18. You see, jumping to, uh, to verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. You see, and you know, what does what is stubble? Stubble is basically a grinded of wood. What is fire? Fire is able to burn up that wood. And that's going to happen with them. They're going to be destroyed. Because if you have fire and you have wood, the fire is going to destroy the wood. That's what's going to happen with them. We are going to be the ones to put them in, uh, in misery, man. We're going to be the ones to take them, you know, to the spirit of Yahweh, we're going to destroy them, man. And it says, And they shall kindle in them and devour them. See? And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Jehovah had spoken it. So there shall not be any remaining of them, which includes these Amalekites. These people that, 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 that basically claim that they're the people of the scriptures, man. You know, with their Yiddish, you know, and things like that. You know, calling us uh, uh, Goyim, you know, which is Yiddish, which is actually Gawayam, which is the actual Hebrew. You know, they call they call us Goyim, you know. But these people know, man. They, these people know. You know. When I spoke about, you know, how, how their dwelling is going to be taken from the earth, which also means that their land... That they used to have back in the days, you know, is going to be distributed amongst, you know, amongst our, amongst our nation, because it says, verse nineteen, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plains, the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. See, so our nation, you know, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna inhabit, you know, uh, um. um we're gonna have it, you know, uh, the land of Esau as well. You see, verse twenty, and the cap captivities of the, and the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites and of the Zarephath, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the city of the south. You see, so we're going to possess a, a, a larger piece of land, but we're also going to inhabit, you know, the, the land of Esau, Eden, the circle of white men upon the earth. You know? So, uh, going back to uh, Exodus, you know, and I want to go to uh, chapter 17 and verse 16, where it says, For he said, because the Lord Jehovah had sworn, that the Lord Jehovah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You know, we see, you know, we can see that, you know, according to biblical prophecy, as it says in Matthew chapter 24, oh, in the latter days, we're going to hear of wars, rumors of wars. You know, showing you that we are in a certain period, you know, that as the, as the so-called, let me just refer to them as Amalekites, you know, these Amalekites claim that they're the people of the scriptures, you know, and, and, and once people of the scriptures, which are the Israelites, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but also those who are scattered among the heathen nations, who might look like heathen nations, but this lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob according to their father's seed line, you know, if the true Israelites will be in the land, you know, there, there, would no, there will be no more war. There will be no more war upon the earth. Showing you if if Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai says that he will have war with Amalek from generation to generation, you know that these so-called white people still need to be upon the earth. Because we still see that prophecy need to unfold. Because there's no peace upon the earth yet. You see, and I'm gonna gonna show you that as well. Because Knowing that this prophecy still needs to unfold, 
you know, it's, it's very easy for us to understand that they are still on the earth right now not not as Volker Malone says that they are that they are uh, done away with because if that would be the case you know there will be no more war upon the earth because most I said that you know they're gonna be uh, done away with and where is it I had it looked over it busy talking I forgot where I was where I was there and I forgot I was there see this is Micah chapter uh, chapter 4 verse 1 and it says but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord of the house of the Lord of, of the Lord Jehovah shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow into it and the mountain refers to a, a form of government and the hills refer to minor government so it says that you know the house of the Lord Jehovah shall be established in the top of the mountains which means that the nation of Israel is going to be above all these other nations we are going to be the ones in rulership upon the earth you know it says and the people shall flow into it and many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord Jehovah and to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord Jehovah from Jerusalem. We can see that this scripture has not yet come to pass, even though that these Amalekites are in the land that claim to be us. Because if this would be the case, the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai would have been kept upon the earth. We see that the, the land Sabbath is not being kept. We see that they have this Sodomite fast, you know, in the land of Israel up to this day and age. Which the, the scripture says that if a man lies with another man, they shall, they shall be put to death. You know, but they, these people can do whatever the heck they want to do upon the earth. Showing you that, you know, um, they are they are uh, they're the ones, they're the wicked, and they're the ones in rulership. You know, and that the real Israelites are not in rulership yet. You know, verse three, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You see, so it says that when Yahweh comes back and establishes the kingdom of Yahshua Allah, which is the nation of Israel, you know that all these weapons of war will be turned into, into uh, gardening tools to basically farm the land, and that the nation shall not learn war anymore. You see, but what can we see upon the earth right now? We see that war is brewing. We see that hey, the third world war is about to come upon the earth, showing you that the Most High is still at war with Amalek, and that they are still here until this day and age. You see, but their latter end is going to be that they shall perish forever. You know, after a thousand years of hardcore slavery, they're going to be done away with. You see, for all the atrocities that they have been doing. But of course, the Most High has created them to be the whooping stick to judge our people. You see, so. I want to read uh, numbers um, again, and then I want to close it off. And a Lord willing, this this lesson was edifying, you know, with a little bit through the spirit, because I spoke a little bit on things that I didn't plan on going in. But hey, it is what it is. And if it needs to be brought out, it has to be brought out, man. Because this is Numbers chapter twenty-four, verse twenty, and when he looked at Amalek. He took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations. They were the first nation that basically came up against us in war. You see? But his latter end shall be that he perished forever. So, um, eventually, you know, these people, which go all the way back to, to East Eden, the super women upon the earth, you know, they're going to they're gonna be extinguished. They should not have any more people upon the earth you know, to multiply. 
you see so that you know first and foremost goes into the man you know but eventually other females are going to be destroyed as well you see so hey lord willing it is less was edifying i want to give all praise honor and glory to yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham raka kodesh the bondage to the elder apostles of great millstone who teach you well and shalom to the sincere actions furnished truth and sincerity shalom